one. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Myra and uh, Paula, right? Okay. Yes. So today we are going to learn this part, unit eight. Okay. Unidad ocho con communities. Comunidades. Okay. And in this big topic, we have a small topic here about neighbors. Neighbors. Como se dice neighbors? Vecino, sí, vecino, okay? Yeah, vecino. So in English it's called neighbors. Neighbors. And here we can see the spelling of neighbor in British English. Because actually in British English and in American English they have different spellings for the same word. Yeah. So in British English it's N E I G H B O U R. Mm -hmm. Right, neighbor. Yes, British English. Yeah, this is British English. But how would they spell it in American English? Mm -hmm. So also N E I G H B. Seems the same, right? So far, so good. But here we have O R. So that would be neighbor. Yeah. Neighbor. Neighbor. Yeah. So the pronunciation is similar, but the spelling is different, right? Mm -hmm. Can you figure out any other words that have such differences, spelling differences between British and American English? Like one is O U R, one is O R. Uh, yes, there, there's a lot of words with different spelling. Yeah, for example, how, how would you say color in uh, English? English is just C O L O R. C-O-L-O-R. So here you can find O-R again, right? Yes. It's like the neighbor. Yes. And in British English, it's spelled like O-U-R. Mm -hmm. The pronunciation is still color, right? Yes. Okay, very nice. So let's move on with the um, vocabulary part on page 92. So here we first need to look at part two. Working pairs match sentences one through five with the opposite meanings A, B, C, D, E. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what what is a uh, opposite meaning? In Spanish. Uh -huh. In Spanish, you uh, call it an antonymous. Antonymous, right? Antonymous. So here, in each sentence, we can find a phrase. Mm -hmm. A phrase in the bold font, right? So in the first sentence, I, we can find. I get on well with my neighbor. Mm -hmm. And then we can find the explanation afterwards, which is he always, sorry, we always say hello and have a chat, mm -hmm. right? So here you can find what get on well with means, right? So that means have a good relation with somebody. Yes. If you say, I get on well with my neighbors, that means I have a good relation with my neighbors. Mm -hmm. right? So we can cooperate and coexist well, right? Yes. Because we always say hello, we have a good chat. So could you please repeat that phrase? Get on well with. Get on well with. Get on well with. Get on well with. Very nice. And here we can find the arrays leading to sentence B, right? So, Myra, can you read sentence B here? Yes, my neighbor gets on my nerves. He's always complaining. Oh, well, he's always complaining. He's always saying something bad about me, right? <laughs> okay, so that, that means we don't actually have good relations, right? All right, so get on my nerves. Get on my nerves. That means he always make me feel bad, right? Yes. Okay, he always make me feel like. I should be careful, right? <laughs> Extremely careful. So here we find that get on well with and the get on my nerves are kind of opposite mm -hmm. meaning, right? Mm -hmm. So can we read them together? First, get on well with. Get on well with. And the next one, get on my nerves. Get on my nerves. Mm -hmm. Be careful, that's not nervous, that's nerves. 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 We don't pronounce that last letter E, okay? Nerves. So that's nerves. nerves. Okay, so now let's try to work out, figure out um, which is the opposite meaning of 
those phrases in sentence two, three, four, five, okay? Mm -hmm. So, Pamela, can you read sentence two? I prefer to mind my, my own business, mm -hmm. so I don't ask the neighbor's personal questions. Okay, very nice. So, I don't ask the neighbor's personal questions, so we respect each other's privacy, right? Yes. So, that is what my one's own business means, okay? So you only take care of your own things, your own stuffs, and don't ask about the privacy of the other people or cheesemates. Okay, <laughs> right? Yes. And can we try to find in sentence A, C, D, E, which one have, which one has a phrase that that looks like an opposite meaning of this one? Uh, for example, I think that letter E. I can be quite noisy, so I often ask my neighbors about their mm -hmm. lives. Okay, all right. You are right, but you need to pay attention to the pronunciation of this okay. adjective. This word noisy? pronounces nosy. Nosy. Nosy, yeah. It derives from the noun nose. Nice, oh. right? Oh. Okay. So it looks like feels like to put your nose into someone else's things, right? <laughs> okay, so that's nosy, what nosy, nosy. means. Nosy. Okay, yeah, so I often ask my neighbors about their lives. That's quite, how do you say that? Cheese. <laughs> yes, yes. How do you say Cheese 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 right? Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, so yeah, you're right. So here, number two and, and the E, they are opposite meanings. And number three, Paula, can you read that sentence? The three? Yeah, number three sentence. I sometimes invite my neighbor over, over, uh, over for coffee. Yeah, you actually, you should, should not emphasize on the over. It's like, I sometimes invite my, my neighbors over. My neighbors uh, my over, neighbor over for coffee. coffee. So here we have the phrase, invite somebody over invite somebody over so that means okay so we can have some coffee together we can talk mm. we can share some movies some chocolate together right so that is invite someone over invite someone to your place to share a period of time right so now we can look at a c d i think uh, letter d letter d okay yes. so that sentence can you read that yes I like to give myself to myself so my neighbor has a meeting in my house. Oh, my neighbor has a meeting in my house. Tell the truth, that's my case. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I seldom invite my neighbor to my house. So I keep myself to myself. Mm. Right? So that means I just stay alone. Mm, yes. I don't intermingle too much with, with the other ones, right? Okay. It's my yeah. case. It's my case, okay. <laughs> All right, and then number four, Myra, can you read that sentence now? Yes, my neighbor's dog is a nuisance. Mm -hmm. I think that really nuisance. 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 He's always barking early in the morning. Mm, okay, barking early in the morning. So that means some kind of travel, right? Nuisance that disturbs other people a lot, right? Okay, so we can. Take a look at A and sorry C C A A, A. A. No. I think that A Do you think ah, so? Yes. A A Do you think so? A is my neighbor has pets but they never disturb me. Mm, yes. Disturb also means to cause some trouble to somebody. Mm -hmm. That meaning is quite sim similar to a new <laughs> That's not opposite. That's actually not opposite. Ah, okay. Yeah. So maybe you can look at. Maybe number E. Uh, letter E. Letter E. We already used that. Actually, ah, we should, really, yes. Yeah, we should look at the others. So. C. C is we make friends. We make friends with our neighbors immediately. Yeah, so that actually means we develop a very good relation, right? Okay, and the annuance is something that causes trouble. So they are kind of opposite, okay? 
maybe not so <laughs> not uh, not so accurate, right? Okay, right, very nice. And number five. We didn't, we didn't get to know our neighbors for years. We didn't get to know our neighbors for years. So get to know. If you get to know your neighbor, that means you visit them, they visit you, you talk a lot to communicate, right? So we only have letter A left, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so letter A is my neighbor has pets, but they never disturb me. So disturb is also like to appear in someone else's life, mm. okay? Mm. Maybe frequently, <laughs> maybe in an unhappy way, okay? So get to know and uh, disturb. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. Oh no, sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. We're right. Get to know and disturb. Okay. And the next one is articles. We can look at the same. Look at the same page. We have the other part in articles, grammar part. Right. So we have a short paragraph here about neighbors. And uh, we have some items underlined in this paragraph, which are actually usually uh, nouns. But the nouns in English, you know, they are divided into two categories, countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Yes. And also we have proper nouns, like a place, a country, a person, right? Okay, and we need to pay attention, especially pay attention to the articles mm -hmm. or no articles used in those noun or noun phrases, okay? So, the, um, I would like to invite uh, Paola to read this paragraph in a few minutes. Are you Paola? Maybe, maybe until letter, no, until here. In the middle we have report on the study. Okay. Okay. I say, say that 45% of Americans know most of their neighbors' names. The study uh, was conduct by conducted. 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 By a group called Pew Research. Mm -hmm. And uh, a reporter called Aaron, Aaron Smith. Smith. Aaron Smith. Wrote a well known report. Today. Okay, very nice. So, so far we have already encountered several cases of mm. articles, right? So the first one is a study says. A study says. That means a, a research says, right? So why there is a up here? Because we mentioned this research or this study for the first time. Mm. We haven't read, mentioned this before, right? So this is the first time in the period in our conversation or in the article. So that is why we need to say, okay, it's a study. It's a study. Un estudio, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the second time we mentioned it, we find something different. The second time we mentioned this study, we said the study was conducted. Mm. Why? Because this is kind of old information. We have already mentioned it before, right? Mm. So here we say the study was conducted. We don't say a study anymore. Unless we need to mention another study, right? Okay, so we are still talking about the same thing, but we mention it again. So that is why we say the study was. Okay, and then in letter C, we said a reporter called Aaron Smith. A reporter called Aaron Smith. So what is a reporter, do you know? Oh. In Spanish, you call it periodista, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so that is a man in charge of uh, writing the essays, the reports or something, mm. or the, the news articles, right? Okay, so this time a reporter called Aaron Smith, we not only mentioned this reporter, but also introduced his name, right? So definitely this is also another piece of new information for us. Okay, and then could you please carry on with the other? Yes. The remaining part of the article. Okay. Uh, it uh, turns uh, it turns out that parents are more likely to speak to neighbors than non parents. And the most common way to interact with neighbors is face to face. The results of the study are very different are very different to figure figures in England. Hmm, very nice. So here we have also we have encountered several 
cases of the usage of articles or I don't, nothing at all, right? So for example, the first one, parents. Mm. Parents is the plural form of parent, right? So we know parent is a kind of a noun. And here we find the plural form of parent, so that's parents, right? All right, so why we don't have any articles for it? Because it's not a specific parent, it's uh -huh. a generality. Yeah, very nice. And it's kind of a common phenomenon yes. that you can find in most or even all of them, right? Okay, so here in this sentence, we not only have parents without articles, but also non-parents. Non-parents. So parents, non-parents. We don't have to put a dot there because we are referring to the general phenomenon, right? Okay, and then letter E, a letter E that's the most common way to interact with neighbors. The most common way. Why do we have dot here? Because it's like a gram grammar structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the most is. That's right. right. Just like when we talk about more and the most. In a phrase, if we have most plus an adjective, plus now, and in most cases we need a dot there. Why? Why don't we need a dot for more usually? Because. The most, uh, you have to, uh, you are uh, talking about a um, specific mm -hmm. uh, noun? No, yes, noun? Yeah, because in, in this case, group. in this case, the most adjective noun, for example, in this case, oh, the okay. most common way is the only way, right? Yes. It's mm -hmm. a unique thing. So in that case, we will use the, the to indicate that we are talking about a unique thing, which is the most common way. Okay, mm -hmm. there is another, there is another most common way, right? So this is the only one. Okay, very nice. So now we move on to the last that is letter F. So it says the result of the study are very different to figures in England. Why we don't have a the in England? Why we don't say in the England? Because England is a proper noun. It's a proper noun, it's a country, right? Yes. yes. Or we, okay, more, more really accurately, we can say it's a, it's a nation, right? Mm -hmm. It's a nation. Right? It's a nation within the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And uh, so most proper nouns, I mean, like most countries, most nations, cities, or continent, mm -hmm. okay, we don't have that for it. But in some proper nouns, we do have. For example, like the university. The university, yeah, that's right. You can say the university of blah blah blah, mm -hmm. like, like you may say the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, right? Yes. So there would be a the, and in some compound proper nouns like the United States. Mm -hmm. Even in in its abbreviation, we may say the U.S. It is because I one day I heard that. Uh, an American girl mm -hmm. was uh, saying that uh, United States states is not an, a name of a country, it's just United States. Yeah, we also have the United Mexican States, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and also the UK, and we also need to mention the UN. What is mm -hmm. the UN? The UK. the UK is the United Kingdom, right? Yeah. And the UN is the United Nations. Mm. It's an organization, it's not a country, but we yes. also use the for it. And in some countries, like the Philippines, the Netherlands, we also use the. Yeah, so that's kind of exceptions, you know. It is because, it, uh, it is because uh, the names sounds as a foreign nouns? Yeah, it's actually a collective concept. Uh, for example, the Philippines are the the Philippines island, from the Philippines islands. Oh. Yeah, so that there are several islands in this country. And the Netherlands, <laughs> they're also united with several provinces. So they used to be some small countries and then they joined together to form the United Kingdom, no, sorry, the Netherlands. So that is why we also have the province. Okay, and uh, Okay, so after the rest, we will practice on our underlined words, 
uh, with the rules of articles and also complete the sentences below, okay? Mm -hmm. So now we will have a brief rest, okay? okay. All right, so see you later.